Joey, my man, I want to talk to you first and foremost. Crazy to have you here, oh, thank first you. off. Thanks for having me. Uh, we were just talking before the podcast about just, uh, you know, time stamps and how people drift in and out of your life and, you know, because things remain constant yeah. and, uh, and all that and how I was originally or semi-originally made aware of your situation and what you're about was through this Vice documentary yeah. um, or this mini doc, if you will, what, 20 minutes, something like that? Yeah, but we about that, yeah. Um, super cool. I hadn't seen what... So the story itself is, is very intriguing and the intricacies about you going to, you know, trying out for the Raptors 905 and the street ball and how they told it was cool, but the underlying emotion of it in terms of just like you showed a lot of vulnerability in that that was like that was sitting there at the dinner table man like oh, that man, was like yeah. i couldn't i was like wow yeah. and that took me back so how did the whole how did vice get in touch with you how did that happen well um i have a good friend of mine actually i grew up playing ball with um is now he does a lot of media stuff and does some stuff with vice mm. and he pitched the idea to me listen why don't you know you've been doing a lot of things with street ball pro ball a lot of people know who you are and stuff so uh, let me pitch this thing to, to vice vice doc, uh, vice and uh, actually came through. Damn. So that's how I got the opportunity Damn. for Vice. Yeah. Just through, and it's through basketball. It's all through ball. You yeah. Know? So and you used to play with them or whatever? You used to play with them. Yeah, actually, we grew up, grew up with each other. We went to Mel Davis basketball camp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. This, uh, yeah, man. And this, uh, and we became really, really good friends. That's crazy. So when they came to you with the idea, did you was the idea to go that deep? Or was it just to tell the story of Joey Haywood? I I don't know. I didn't know what it was going to be. I, just a, I think it was just a story for Joey Haywood, but I didn't know it was going to be like that. Even when my wife saw it, she was surprised. They went. Oh shit! What did, what did she think? Uh, you know, she just didn't <laughs> think it was going to be like that. Yeah. Let's keep it to that. Like, yeah, yeah, keep it yeah. to that, right? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Um, it showed a lot of emotion, the struggle. It was beautiful, right? And it just like it just didn't show just one direction, right? It showed many different parts mm-hmm. of basketball emotion, like I said. And uh, yeah, man, it's, it, it was very, uh, you know, it was funny because I didn't really watch it. I don't really, I didn't really watch my Vice document. Actually, I cut it. Like when I watch it, I like you know, I stop it to the point that dinner table, I just stop. But the other day, like about maybe two weeks ago, I watched it, man. No, and way. I actually like be honest with you, I cried. No way. Like I cried, bro. I got teary eyed when I watched it, it was, too. A hundred percent, a hundred thousand percent. I couldn't. That's why I, I said I've watched. I probably watched it five, six times. Yeah, like full length. I watched it twice before this, before tonight. Yeah, and it's just like, it's all they they, they change the mood and they, it's it's beautifully told. It is like shout out to Vice. It is, it is. beautifully it is. told and, is. and the ups and the downs and how they take the viewer through these different emotions and hmm. and how close you got and all this stuff and then it was just like just this massive it's just like in a movie where you just have this huge fucking drop yes and just everything hits and right before that it's kind of like they just build your character to a point and then they just, just strip boom, it down strip to it's it down fucking, man like naked man <sighs> just straight up naked it's like yeah it was, you know what though and it's funny let me tell you something not a lot of people well watch the vice documentary i actually tried out in 20 ele- oh, no 20 was it right when I was yeah when I when I left St Mary's I had one more year to go to St Mary's University I played it for three years right but I I had an opportunity to go back again but my my son no no he was only one and two years old so he's about two but we wouldn't make a lot of money because I was in school that time and and my wife said listen you go back to school we need to make money because we got a kid right so I was like you know what I better go turn pro, I better go try for the pro route yeah. So in 2013, before I turned pro, I tried out for the the the, the oh, D League, but shit. it was a it was a national nas- national tryout. So you had to go to I think it was Kentucky during that time. I think yeah, it was in yeah, Kentucky, yeah, 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 and yeah, I yeah. actually made it. I made it to the draft. So when you when you so they got scouts there, they got the teams there. They do like a combine, right? It's like a combine. Yeah, they do. You just do a couple drills and they put you in the games. Yeah, right. And our team, we won. We're like we're like five and zero oh or something like that. We were killing. He teams. cleaned house. Yeah. Oh, we cleaned house. I had it was me and a guy named so funny and a guy named Ryan Anderson. Okay. Right. Sounds familiar, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. You played in the NBL Canada. Okay. Yeah. Right. And also um, with London Lightning. Yeah. And then. Um, he played in the D League, but we were in the same boat. Oh, I've so seen it was Ryan play multiple times. I know who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah so yeah. I got a call. Say, listen, you got you're in the NBA D League draft. You played really well. Da da da. But then you got to go to. I'm like, okay, but it's not done yet. Like you can sign a contract, but you have to go to different team tryouts. 
like you know like the open trials for right. each team right, right. right. affiliated right. teams but like man i'm like who's paying for that You're like that's crazy yeah. so i had to so I went to Bakersfield and Austin, Tech, some, I think Austin, Austin, Texas, some Austin team or something like that. Okay. Right. So I went there for those two trials. And I, but the best try I had was in Bakersfield Jam. And they're in the, and they're really interested. They listen, we we're really considering you. And I was killing that, that trial. And that trial was actually in Toronto because their really? Bakersfield Jam was affiliated to Toronto Rapids during that time. Damn. And then. Um, oh, that's right. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. That's so. <laughs> and then they relocated to Mississauga. Is that right? Yes. I yes. think they're in yeah, they made, they right made now. a whole new team. Yeah, they made a whole, whole new, new D League team. Okay, so cool. before that, right? So, um, but that's the year there was the NBA lockout. Oh shit! So all the guys that made it to the draft, including me, got pushed down to the drafts. That was the time that Jamal Tinsley came back. Damn. So a lot of those ex NBA guys that came to the draft pushed all like guys like me down. right down. Yeah. So I'll, I'm like waiting, right? I'm in. I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm at my in-laws' house, and we're watching the online, online um, D League draft. Fuck. My name didn't get called. Big, I would think Big Big Flu Jam was a team. Yeah. No. Damn. So I didn't get selected. So I was like, man, what the heck I'm gonna do? Like, dude, you don't understand. Like after that, I was like, what you am didn't I get do? it. Yeah. So I got a call from Halifax Rainman. <laughs> right. And owner. the NBL was like just like just not, started that just year. Started. That was yeah. the first year. Yeah. And like, listen, um, so did you, what's going on with the D League? Did you get on? He knew. He knew what it was. He knew it was up. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, no. I was like, listen, do you want to play for the Rain Man? I'm like, yeah, yeah maybe. Yeah. 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 I think that that's actually sounds pretty good because I ain't doing nothing right now, right? Yeah. And I need yeah. to make money. And then, uh, so he's like, yeah, so you can, yeah, we really, really want you. We're continue, considering you. And the head coach was a guy named Pep Carlos. Okay. Um, he used to, he was a head coach for, uh, the Mexican national team. <laughs> and it's so funny because when I played for Trinidad national team, he was like right. sitting right, he was the next room over in the same hotel and I spoke to him. Damn. So he was a head coach. Damn. So, you know, that's why the basketball is such a small world. So when I got on that year, it was actually, we did really, really, really good that mm -hmm. year for the Rainman. We made it to the finals. We lost to London Lightning. Um, but that year it was, it was sick. And I got Canadian player of the year. Yeah, I was an yeah, yeah. um, all-star team captain. All it was that. so great, man. It was like a great experience. And just learning from that coach, I learned so much, right? So then, so so you played um, <coughs> twice for them. You had two stints with them, correct? With Rainman? Yeah. Yes, I did. And then you also went to the finals the second time. No, no. No? I went, when I went, not the second time, because we they changed coaches. Oh. The coaches left. But when I went to Denmark, right, that year when I played at Denmark, it was that one year. And then I went to Iceland right after that. I left. I went back to the NBL for the, for the, for the Halifax Rainmen. And that's when we went to the finals because that same coach came back and coached that year and wanted me to come back. Got it. Okay. Yes. Crazy. Okay, so I got the timeline because I know you and I've been following you for this for this time. So for yeah. people, for for our audience, obviously your audience is listening to this. They might already know, yeah. but for our audience <coughs> that doesn't know, let's bring it all the way back to the start where um, coming up high school playing here and then coming. I mean, you went to Langara right off the uh, right off the right gate, after high right? School, yes. So bring me just bring me through just briefly so I can get a little bit more like context in yeah. the head because you, I mean, you're 34 years old now, yeah. right? You've been at this for a minute, a long time, man, a, a long, long time. time. Yeah. I mean, that is like that's bro. That, that, that's a long time yeah um so came out the gate went to langara please fill us in from langara. where you were there or even before that to, to okay now yeah so basically went to high school to mcgee secondary which right. is vancouver um played high school ball there some from grade eight to grade 12 um only got ex only uh only got two looks from two schools. Which is crazy, but yeah. Right? Which is so crazy looking back. Like yeah, <laughs> Capilano and Langara. <laughs> right? That year, I was, a lean, I was having 30 points a game in high school. Right. Um, and I played against Levon Kendall. Mm -hmm. uh, he went to Kitsilano. Chris mm -hmm. Porter. It was a power team. Dropped 34 in those guys. It was like... It was a good year for me. Bro, it's actually on your wiki. I don't know if you know that. In the wiki? Th that's that's literally on your Wikipedia. It's oh, like you actually dropped 37 points in that. 37. Yeah. That anyways. game was a crazy game, man. Yeah. So, yeah, got offered to play at Capilano, but Capilano was way too far for me because in the North Van, I live in Vancouver. So, Langara was the closest, is obvious. Yeah. But that time, uh, there was a coach called Novell Thomas. Okay. He was on a Canadian national team. Oh, no. Was he Canadian national that year? Yeah, he was on the Canadian national team that year. Um, so he had a lot of experience, right? And he's a guard, too, as well, right? Yeah, so he's perfect. And the assistant coach, I think, was Aaron Mitchell, STM. Yeah, yeah. I coach. know Aaron Mitchell, yeah. Yeah, so he was assistant coach, too, as well. So and oh, the, the guys were so cool, right? It was like, okay. And it felt like home, right? Yeah, yeah. And they let me play my game, right? Yeah. But the Capilano coach, too, Eberhardt, 
he wanted me to play my game. He was game. coaching uh, Capilano, Capilano right during that time. Yeah, yeah, right? Damn, really? So, um, yeah, so he really, really wanted what? me. But yeah, it, yeah. it was just too far, right? Way too far. But, I, you know, so I went there. Um, and then, but Novell Thomas left to play for the for, to, with Steve Nash. Yeah. Aaron Mitchell couldn't coach anymore. So they, they brought in Simon Dykstra as the head coach. And he coached Kitsilano that year. Huh. Uh, for when I when I was going to high school, so yeah. he knew my game, knew how I played, right? So he kind of started me a little bit, then all of a sudden, didn't play me that much because I was doing a little too flashy, yeah, and all this other stuff, right? Um, so I just left. I didn't take school serious, you know. Yeah. I just wanted to play ball. Uh, so I basically failed out of school. Damn. I, I passed two classes. I could have got back one class. I could have called the professor, say, "Hey, listen, like you know, I can yeah. do it. Like did a rewrite, but did that. I just was, you know, I was just." You wanted to hoop. Yeah. I want to hoop. I didn't want to go through that whole thing. So after that, I did street ball, man. So I was doing stuff with EA Sports during that time. Um, did the NBA street games. Uh, touring. I went to Japan. I toured in Japan. I was on a street ball team. So hold up. What year is this? This was uh, with the Japan stuff? Yeah. 2005. So set the scene for 2005. Because 2005, like, that's a whole different climate. People don't understand what street ball was like back then. Oh, what was time. What was street ball like from that 2000 to even, like, 2007, 2008? Man, that was, like, and one, man. Like, and, and, one, and one basically put the street ball game in the map. Yeah. And, you know, watching, like, Animal Mix, say, Volume 1, 2, Skip to My Lou, then you see Volume 3, Hot Sauce. So when I saw Skip to My Lou play, I was like, listen, Volume 1, I was like, I want to be... This guy. Yeah, yeah. So I I mimicked everything that Skip to My Lou did. Everything. I even called myself at one point Skip to My Lou. Not gonna front. Not gonna yeah, front. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? I was like the bootleg Skip to My Lou, right? But yeah, they, they just changed the game globally, man. Globally, yeah. just off that tape. Yeah, that's yeah. Cool. Bree, see if you can pull that up in, in, in a couple of seconds here. I want to, I want to like just for for viewers so they can see what the hell that was like because you people don't even understand, man. Like professional basketball and street basketball are like not even the same sport. It's not. It like <laughs> it's different, like, man. I don't know. It's different. It's it's not it's not I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. Like you can never put <coughs> obviously these guys are extremely talented, but in talented in different ways. They're entertainers, different right? Entertainers, like man. like uh, and I love it cuz it gives avenues. Like you take a guy like I don't know, the professor. Like could this guy yeah. play professionally anywhere cuz of his height? Probably not. I don't know, right? But like you put him in that setting, he's a international superstar. He's a, you know, right? But you know what though? Don't get me wrong, man. Professor, I'll tell you. He's what. nice. That man is nice. He be like killing like university top like oh, university yeah? guy college guys. I don't be, doubt it. Oh I don't man, doubt it. I don't and doubt people it. sleep on him because he's scrawny, little scrawny. Of course, scrawny, little right? white guy from Oregon. Yeah, no, no, this guy could hoop, man. See, this is crazy. So this is way back. Oh, this is way back. And when I first saw that clip right there, that man, I was like, man, this. I is love amazing. that you know that clip. Oh, big time, man. <laughs> oh, big time. Yeah. And just yeah, a nice, fl- oh yeah. All the, like it's just like put this is an extra flair to the game, man. It's just making the game like fun, right? Like look at this, like. Boom, with the crowd going crazy. Yeah, like you yeah, want yeah, when you yeah. hear that, the crowd going crazy, it's like you want to do more. It's a different type of Oh, a different type, man. It's like Hell yeah. It's 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 crazy, man. So basically they and one actually influenced me, but also some of the guys here too to put on the streetball team, like like the Nautic the Nautic mixtape. Damn. Right? So uh crazy. You know? So they yeah, so Big ups to Am One, big ups to Skitum Lou and all the legends in New York and Totally, totally, totally. So tapes. hold up. So I don't actually even notice. So what's the um background with the Nautic? How did that come to be? Because I, I just look back and Google and see the stuff and I see it even today in yeah. the different leagues and stuff like that. Yeah. I see it everywhere on the logos, but yeah. I don't actually know the origin story. How did that even happen? Um basically, like like I said, like we were watching like I was watching this stuff here, right? And, you know, with basketball, you know, you meet certain people, you know, like good players and stuff and say, Hey, listen, let's during that time that had the NBA hoop it up. Listen, let's put a team in, right? So we put a team in my crew. Um, and then that these two Caucasian guys, white guys, just come up to us, right? Like, hey man, we're trying to film this uh this mixtape, man. Is it cool if we film this ga- this game right now? It was a morning game. I remember it. Morning game. <laughs> the worst. Was, all right. Or you know what the worst. The I worst. Hey, morning, morning game. Like 9 a.m., right? Jesus. But guess what, though? But during that time, the NBA hoop it up summer, in the summer, you're like excited. I, you can't sleep. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, the first game, it's like, yeah, well, sure, why not? You know, this is a fun thing. We didn't know where, where it was going to go, right? But the first game, man, it was so, like, the first moves we started to pull, the other court, so basically, there was a court here, and there's another court. So we played in this court here to save this court one. Court two is right behind. And people were playing. People took over that court oh, no while way. they were playing. No way. 
and watching, not yeah. even watching that game. Damn. And that's when that first game we start pulling tricks. It was it was a wrap. It was over. It was over. Yeah. But also had another coup cut with Johnny Blaze, Goosebumps. Um, what? Yeah. So that so basically we had like two different crews, right? So okay. my crew and Johnny, like David, uh, David Dazzle. Those guys had their own crew, and they're doing the same stuff too. But we all had different styles. Right, right, so right. Guys would watch our game. Guys would watch their game. And it was like crazy. So it was like two different shows, <laughs> premieres. Fucking crazy. Then, so that was just the first year. So the first tape, tape came out. The Nautic one came out. It was like, and it went on the internet. It was a uh, underground, yeah. underground tape. Yeah. People couldn't believe, like, these guys from Canada are pulling these moves. Yeah. Such Vancouver. Like, yeah. nobody. Yeah. And it got popular. Over See, the Canada, internet. so, like, listen, guys, like, contest, contest. But Canada back in the day, like, <laughs> Andrew Wiggins didn't come up. Like, we didn't have number one draft picks. Like, no. we didn't have nothing. Like, Canada was booty back in the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Booty. Like, you're from where? Where? Exactly. No, it's true, man. <laughs> yeah. It's true. Do you guys have McDonald's? Do you yeah. guys have, you know what I mean? <laughs> You have self service up there. You exactly. got the internet. You got the internet. Exactly. Yeah, I get you. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, the first soul. You're like, listen, man. We could. So when we watched it, like, listen, we could do better. We could do better. Let's make a second tape. The confidence, man. The second tape came out, and the second year for the hoop it up, it was oh my gosh, we topped the first tape, man. And it was so crazy. The second year, the people that hoop it up knew that we'll be there. They had security come to our games and police. Damn. And that was when we're only like like 18, 19, 20 years old, man. Where was this? This was at um, Vancouver. This was at Science World. So, you know, that I've big seen parking that. lot? I've seen that. But now it's like they have high rises now. That used to be the, the, the hoop it up. But I've seen it with Science World in the back. In the back, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah in the in background. background. Yeah, 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 that's right. That's right. Damn. So, yeah, man, it, it, just, it just went. Yeah, man. Went after that, it just went viral. So, were you playing uh, Langara at that time? I left, man. You were going? <laughs> yeah, I was left, man. I left Langara during that time, man. Oh, that was yeah, too man. funny. Oh yeah, Damn. I left. I left. What did you tell your coach? He knew that I failed the class. Okay, he knew, right? Yeah, yeah, but he didn't yeah, really yeah. know it was about basketball. Right, 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 right. right. So you didn't. But he kind of knew a bit, but then you know, you never had that conversation like, "Yeah, I'm nah, just gonna play man. street ball." I wasn't. Nah, I just didn't talk too much during that time. I was like, ah, "I'm just gonna." He wanted me back, and it's funny because I was still in school too, as well. Okay. Yeah, I was still. Was I still in school? Yeah, I was still in school, taking some courses. Yeah. Right. Uh, but and I went to practice here and there during that time, but I never took it too serious, man. And eventually, like you know, I was like, screw it, man. I'm not gonna waste my time coming to practice. That's crazy. You know, and all this other stuff. Yeah, talk about man. practice. Practice, man. You know what I mean? Practice. <laughs> <laughs> talk about practice. You brought trying to talk about practice. Exactly. Aaron, Aaron trying to talk about practice. <laughs> exactly, man. Uh, that's hilarious. When did that little AI thing come out? When did when did when did man? When? I don't even know when that came out, man. That was probably after that. Yeah, I don't know when that I came. Yeah, I think after, it was after that. Oh, way after. Yeah, way after. God, I'll quote that today on the yeah. court, and people won't even know what I'm talking about. Oh, like, kids man. don't even know what the hell I'm talking know, about. Man. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> he knows what I'm talking about. Shout out to him. I probably showed him. <laughs> <laughs> um, shout out to the, uh, shout out to, uh, to Iverson. Anyways, so, yeah. okay, so, so you, so 2005, 2006. Uh, you're there, Langara, whatever. Yeah. But you still have college eligibility. Yes, I had, I think, four, I had four more years. So what are you thinking at that time? Streetball, man. Streetball. I didn't know. I, you didn't I, even want to go I, where, where, to I, college. Man, listen, man. If you listen, guys could see like, look hate, this listen, guy's giving me, you, me right I'll, now. I'll tell you something right now, man. I was hated on by a lot of coaches in, in Vancouver. Really? Oh, because the way I played, man. I was too fancy, man. They couldn't. They, they, cause think about this, man. During that time, nobody was doing the stuff I was doing. Nobody was doing stuff what the other crew was doing. Nobody was doing that. So we looked upon, like, uh, people looked at us like, you don't want to mess with those guys. Those are like criminals. We're like <laughs> criminals in the city for ball. What? Um, t- and we're talented. We just need to be coached. That's all. Somebody to actually, a coach to take us. Say, listen, you got talent, but let me help you. Nobody ever said that. Nobody. So that's why I didn't want to go to college. And basically, be, be honest with you, that's why I lived in the gym. I wanted to to kill every defender in Vancouver to prove a point. Hell yeah. And I think that's why I'm where I'm at right now because of that. If I never been through that, I don't think I'll be where I'm at right now. So you almost had this like outlier rebel. Oh, like, big time, man. 
everyone. I don't care. I'm trying to kill everybody. And this is real stuff, man. Like, I was so pissed off, Damn. right? Because I worked so hard. And I still made it. I, in, in high school, I still made it to the All-Star game. And I still played on the a, like a top like All-Star team. Like, uh, we played it called Basketball Jones. There's not time that okay. website. But yeah. they held, like, a big event. And I still played. Yeah. And I still showed flares. But I wasn't, I never made it to, like, the Basketball BC I tried out and I made a top 21, but I didn't take them because, and then it had no, man, I tried out, I made it to the end and didn't have, they didn't even have a reason that they didn't have a reason they, to cut me. They just didn't like your style. Yeah. Just like one coach, like I voted for you. I know member's name. I'll say it, Bernie Love. I remember Bernie, I, Bernie Love. He's like, listen, I'm the only one voted for you, but the every coach didn't want you. And he never said why. Damn. Everybody else he cut, they'll say, oh, you need to work on this. Never said, and I destroyed, I was the best guard in that. Yeah. Basketball BC, yeah. Basketball BC was the best guard. Crazy. So how do you get, take a guy from from that a best guard? And I go to university, and a coach say, "Listen, I'm gonna, yeah, I see the talent, but I'm gonna help you, and be two time All Canadian, yeah, lead a score in the nation, and you're gonna you you're gonna tell me that I wasn't that good, I was too flashy, maybe because you didn't you guys didn't care about me, yeah. So I had to go all the way to friggin' Halifax, <laughs> all the way out of Vancouver. People, this is my this is where I live, man. Yeah. It's your home. This is my home. Yeah, you, yeah that's crazy too. You, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you you think that, man, you know, this is my home. People love me. Huh. Think again. I got to go to Halifax, but people love me even 50 times more. That's so crazy. And wanted me to stay there and embrace me. When I let, when I said, listen, coach, man, my, my son is two years old. I got I to gotta make some money, man. Mm-hmm. What can you do to help me? Like, listen, man, I, you can come back. How about this, man? You can come back in, in, in January. Um, and, 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 and play. Um, I know the first, you know, the first, the first season, the first semester is fine. Be with your family, try to w- figure things out, but you know, anything you need to help. Yeah. Well, I can here, help this, here's something we can go coach these camps and make a little bit here. Or yeah. Something like, something that. like yeah. that. Right. Yeah, but yeah. My wife, like, listen, no, we need to make money. So I told him, listen, man, I can't come back. And he was, he was sad. Damn. He was sad. He's like, listen, man, like we really want you back. And it, and it was his last year <sighs> coaching. So I think he expected me to, right. to be there for his right. last year. And I right. wanted to, right. but it was hard. Right, but you know what I mean. So go out there and just you know go and dominate and do all that stuff, man. It was tough, man. It was tough. So at times I hold Vancouver, you know, like the basketball scene. I see it as because of the stuff I've been through. That's so crazy. You know, as 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 kind of negative a little bit, right? So damn, it's changed. I think it's changed more now because it got more academies happening. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So players have more opportunity to get seen if they don't make a basketball BC or don't make it to this team or yep. make it to that. And they go down south more. And, oh, and exactly, like right? Yeah, so yeah. they're way better off because of social media, right? Yeah. No, I, I listen, I, I get that too, but it's yeah. still like, man, community, coaches, people, like that, let's not, you know, shame you one. Like, like let's get that to a point where we got to learn from that. Like that, like how do you let – I'm gonna blow smoke right now. <laughs> How do you let Joey Haywood go to fucking Halifax? And I, listen, I've never been to Halifax. Maybe yeah. Halifax is a great place, yeah. but it's a far place it's away. Far, it's, a, it's like, how do you let something so so much talent venture so far away? Yeah. How do you let um, opportunity just slip through the cracks, essentially? Yeah. How do you let potential slip through the cracks? Yeah. And why? Like, what's the reasoning behind that? Because it's alternative for the time. Yeah. Like, think about it now. Like, think about how much basketball has grown now. Like, in a lot of ways, you were ahead of the curve. Like in a lot of ways, yes, you were man. like ten years ahead of the curve yeah. in terms of like what guys are actually doing yeah. today in the no, league. No, you're right, man. And and like, and that stuff wasn't traditional. See, basketball has grown, and you notice in hoop yeah. heads. Yeah. Maybe the younger guys don't know this, but like, I had a very traditional coach as well, and it was just like. You know, God bless him for what he was, but it's just yeah. like it was very like big man orientated. Guard play yes. was not what it is today. Oh, yes. Guard play was looked down upon. Like we need to run everything through the post. You need to come off that. Yes. Feed the ball. Feed the ball. Why are you dribbling? It's only a two. Listen, the only t- only time you should ever dribble is just to get a better passing angle to go into the post. Exactly. Right? That wasn't necessarily understood. Yeah. So we need to let that be a lesson to us. So like, hey, if there's not like we we have to take our own <coughs> and keep them here. And build upon it, right? That's like there's a reason. I put this up on my Instagram like two years ago. Yeah. Where I was just like, I was watching the BioSteel All Canadian game. Oh, the, well, yeah, the one in um, Toronto. It's in Toronto. Toronto. Yeah. And it's, it's supposed to be all all Canada, right? Mm-hmm. All Canadian. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, Miguel Tommy was playing in it. He yeah, was the only. He's the only BC player. And I put it up. I was like, coaches, there's a reason just why like, there is one BC player. I and agree. 14 
ones from Ontario. There might have been one from out east or I something agree, like that. I agree, man. I like, agree. What's like? Let's just look at this for what it is and say like, okay, there's a problem here. Like, there's a reason why we're not breeding up because we have athletes. You know, we have athletes. Oh, we man. got size. We got athleticism. What's the missing link? What are we doing wrong here? And it's so crazy to hear you say that mm. from ten years prior, fifteen yeah. years prior. That's like, how do we? How are we still? That was in 2017, I think, when I said it. And it's the same thing in 2019. I guarantee. Same thing, man. What do we got to change here? Man, I I personally think the way how the way how we train players, mm. the way how we coach, we have to hold players more accountable. We have to. I think guys got to play outdoors, man. I don't care. You got to play outside. Yes. You got. You got. You have to have that swag, like that. 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 Like that cockiness a little bit. That fucking. That. That. that you know that dirt, no, man. That dirt. You know? that, like literally, literally that dirt. You, know? <laughs> you gotta have like you know those. You know. You the know little cuts. Your little cuts, man. Yeah. You gotta know because that knows. Okay, if I got that cut, man, I'll be dribbling for a long time. Like long I'll be time. outside balling. Yeah, and you right? start getting it just on the one finger, then you start getting it. If you get it on your pinky, then you're really starting. You know, oh like, no, it's true, man. Yeah. It's true. Like all that stuff, man. You know, I think these young guys got to play against adults. Yeah. Because I've played against adults. Almost all my life. Yeah. And like if I couldn't play in the game because I was young, I made sure I was on the sideline working my butt off to get in the game. To get in the game. But yeah. that's not happening because you know why? I think really it's just, it's too much and which is great, gives a lot of players options. And I wish I had that, but it's too many AAU teams. There's too mm-hmm. many all, too many traveling teams, right? Just okay. it's just too much. Okay. You gotta let these guys play, man. Yeah. Now, I don't even see a lot of these young kids coming to open gyms anymore. I don't even know where they're at. That's crazy, too. That's so crazy, too. I know, I know. I know. I, li- I literally know. So if you're, you're in gyms in, uh, in the lower mainland and open gyms are just times when rec centers just have open gym yeah. or whatever, or like even at uh, s- secondary schools and stuff like that, I remember it would be packed. Like an open gym is an event. An open oh, gym is an event, yeah, right? Yeah, you go there to, you know, you're, okay, I'm trying to hoop. Like or, I'm trying to yeah, get, like or work, you, on, work on something. Work, or, like get shots up or you're yeah. trying to play or whatever <laughs> it is. or like Exactly. And it would get to a point, or at least in my recollection, I don't know, again, there's a little bit of a generation gap, but yeah. in my recollection, it was just like you would go there and you were either trying to get shots up or you were trying to play. True. True. Or you were True. going there to do just to, to be in the gym because that would attract people to the gym right so you you start getting audiences in the gym and that's exactly. how a lot of the, the street ball or whatever and just the you know playing playing ones trying to embarrass kids oh exactly man and that's like that's that's hype like that is like the best feeling in the that's world that's the best feeling in the world exactly, man like man. if you're if you're in grade 11 or grade 12 and you go to the gym and you play ones with you know buddy from science class or whatever and you drop them three four times oh man people girls go crazy. it's like it's the best i don't know it's the best feeling man it's a good feeling i man. don't like i just i don't see that yeah. you know like so you know myself coaching uh high school here in bc uh, g- given on the island it's still like if I, if I go after school and like a lot of the times there'll be like a, an hour and a half, 90 minutes right after school until like maybe volleyball is in the gym or something like that. And I'll go there and it's empty. Empty. It's empty. Empty, empty man. I don't, I don't know. Like back in the day when I was playing, growing, growing like in the gym when I was like in high school, even after high school, 2021, 20, man, those gyms would be packed. Yeah, you couldn't packed. eat. Yeah, oh, yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. It'll be packed, and yeah. guys are going at each other, man. And this is not no joke. People going at each other and going hard at each other, man. Yeah. So nowadays, like you said, like I work at Edmonds Community Center part time. Sometime now, recently, I've been th- there every Thursdays after I do my basketball clinic. Barely any kids there That's in the crazy. gym. Just only got the core kids, you know, the no. one or two kids, you know. Yeah. No. That's about it, man. There's not many of these kids. Oh, I'm tired. Or I just had practice, man. After practice, man, I'm still working on my game, man. I'm it, still working on my game. But it wasn't even like, <coughs> for a lot of kids, it wasn't even like, I'm I'm there because I have to be there. Or I'm there because oh, my mom hasn't come pick me up yet. It was there because I like I this is this this is where I, this is where I want to be. No, it's this true. This is the spot I want to be. I love the game. Like I don't want to be home. I don't want to be at his house or her house. Like this is this is this is this is it. Exactly. Yeah, man. And, Crazy. Yeah, and a lot of kids would say, hey, "Listen, I had practice." Or after school, or I have to go to practice, or I have a game, another game, yeah. an AAU game. So they kind of lose that skill development, that that playing against adults. It's just that time, especially the summertime. Yeah. Summertime, man, it's like, man, Kitts Beach. Yeah. We're coming down to the beach and ball. On sure. fr- and I know the time, Saturday after after 1231. Yeah. But you want to be there at 1231 because you want to be there early to get it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To get the Get the right guys. Right guys get, to yeah. play. I got you. Right? Saturday, yeah. Saturday and Sunday. Hell yeah. You know, prime time days, yeah. man. You yeah. know what I mean? So. 
Yeah, cultures, cultures change. It, it has changed. It has, yeah. it has changed. But you know what? Things go in waves, man. We don't know how this will go. I mean, on yeah. the macro scale, basketball's come a long way, man. It has. Basketball come a long it has. way, especially in Canada here, too. Yes, so. it, has. it has. But, uh, you know, with that, especially in Toronto and out east and stuff like that, yeah. but uh, with that same breath, it's like, well, you know, how far has basketball really come, you know, for, for like, for in, Van- in Vancouver? See, see, we say Canada, but... Who, yeah, who, you yeah, know, I we know, think I about know. Toronto, right? <laughs> I know, I know. You know what I mean? Yeah, we don't think about the West Coast. The West Coast hasn't really come a long way. A lot of these guys in the West Coast, Miguel Tom, he's sick. He's a yeah. good player. And I play against him. Yeah. And here in terms, I, I make sure, man, I don't. When I play against Miguel Tomley, I make sure I play hard on him. For sure. And I go at him 110%. For sure. And that's my job yeah. as a basketball player, right? Right? Especially where I'm at. Like, I can't, I can't, I gotta, I gotta show this guy, man. Yeah. Like, I can't back down. Right, yeah. I got sure. Listen, man, you're not done yet, man. You got to keep working on your game. Yeah. And every time I go at him, he knows that. But it's good. It's gonna benefit him. Fuck yeah. But now he's dropping. I'm not saying because of me. No, 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 for right? sure. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He just had sixty the other day. Sixty the other day. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, but he's putting work in the gym. No, for he's sure. He's putting work, and he's a great, talented player. But he has to keep it up, man. He has to keep it up. That keep humbling, up. right? Yeah, stay that's humbling, humbling right? I, that's one of the things I still love. Is like. Guys coming back to old high school gyms, guys yeah. like yourself. Yeah. And um, do, you, do you remember who Calvin Westbrook is? Calvin Westbrook, man. That sounds so familiar. Calvin man. Westbrook uh, played for Vanier uh, in uh, 2006. He had the uh, scoring title for BC in high school for like, I think he might actually still have it. He played senior in grade 9, 10, GP 11, Vanier? 12. GP Vanier. Played for Larry Street. Yeah. Anyways, he, uh, he was a monster. He's like... Was he a guard? Yeah, he was a guard. Yeah, he played professionally and all that. And Calvin West, but yeah. sounds so familiar. Man. He's he yeah. Anyways, he he would come back. Uh, he played with like Brandon Ellis and, and guys like this. But anyways, <coughs> he would um he would always just come back to the gym. And and when I was in my grade eleven and grade twelve year, you know, you have this mis uh, misconception of like oh, oh you're you're the best in your school, which don't mean jack. I don't mean nothing. It doesn't mean jack, yeah. right? And yeah. that's easier to to conceptualize when you're maybe in Vancouver a little bit because you know you go down. Sheltered, to, look. Yeah, yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying. It's like, and then yeah, to yeah. an extreme, you can take that up to the island where it's like, well, I have to go to Oak Bay to like actually get someone else that can hoop, or I have to go to Vancouver to actually get someone else that hoop can hoop. So you get in within your own world because you're like, man, I'm going. 50 kilometers that way and 50 kilometers that way and there ain't nobody that can beat me so I'm, I'm the shit around here right but let me tell you something it does not matter if you're the best player on a shitty team right or in a shitty area oh, you, you need to get to where the top competition is so no, these guys right. would always come back oh, wow. and play right and wow. just 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 wreck just but like, that's how they, that's what they have to do. You win right? score a point. That's crazy. You win score a point. Like these guys will be just coming off a professional season or something like that, and yeah, you're yeah. just some hotshot little eleventh grader, and yeah, you're like, I'm yeah, dropping yeah. thirty. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you come back and you, all right, oh, oh, you got a game. Well, who's got who's the best in here? Yeah. Oh, this person's the best in here. All right, let's play once. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's go to let's go to <laughs> nine. You know, I'll get one point. That's sick, man. You know, and I think that's why probably I personally think maybe that's why the the ball in Victoria, yeah, is is is. is Actually, better than Vancouver. It's more aggressive. That's I a think. statement. Because when I saw when I first saw you, when yeah. I saw you play, yeah, I was like, "You're not from here." I it's can tell. It's a different style. Yeah, yeah. Because every time you, you when you go to the rack, you're going and hitting somebody and making sure you know they get a little contact. Mm-hmm. So I knew you're not really from here, man. It's, it's a, little a little different, different ball. Yeah, yeah. Vancouver's a little different. Yeah, <laughs> you know, in, in different areas have different styles too. Like the island yeah. is one way, Vancouver's another way. Like you go to Toronto, it's a completely oh, different it's way, completely man. Different. Like, oh yeah, we. Uh, I was just out there last summer. To like, <laughs> I was just out there in. Uh, yeah, last summer we did. Uh, I was. What was it? Uh, Red Bull. Yeah, the rain. Oh, you did the rain. You guys, rain, made, it, you guys rain. made it all the way out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, we made it. Out, yeah, we okay, made it out there six, or whatever. And we played out there, and uh, and so we came. We came or something yeah. like that or whatever and um but just just like out here we we like kind of, we, you know and there's not a lot of yeah, you know competition and you know yeah. guys were good but you know you, we, 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 we were a good team man. you know we, we were a good team <laughs> yeah uh, managed to pull out a couple wins and then managed to get to toronto and and play against uh, i think five or six other teams out there from yeah. different regions or whatever and uh you know the first teams to go are the West Coast team, and then the 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 mid the mid the Midwest team, okay, and then it was the Halifax team, and then it was just like Toronto and Ottawa oh, wow. just slugging it out, and it was like so symbolic of like, and they did it big out there in Toronto, like there was you know big, big crowds, bigger than out here, huh? oh way bigger, way bigger. They had DJs and art competitions, wow, wow, and there was you know wow, wow. Uh, they put stands, it was packed, whatever. Yeah, it was cool, super cool, but you got to see like it was a direct representation of where basketball was, right? Where it's yeah. just like. 
you kind of lack it in a couple areas. And then these, these areas are a couple steps ahead. Yeah. And then there's these two strongholds, right? And wow. they just kind of, you know, went at it or whatever. But it was yeah. a perfect representation of like where we're at. And it yeah. just, every time I keep running into this stuff, and I don't necessarily, I'm not going to sit here and say I have the answers or anything like that. <clears throat> yeah. I'm just observing Me and too. saying yeah, like, you. what you see, what you've been through, right? This is like yeah. the, my experience. Your experience. And I don't exactly. mean to shit on this person or oh, that yeah, area, I feel you, that, man. But I'm just I'll like, okay, you. this is what this is. This is what we want it to be. We want it to be. So there's a gap. So what could we? So okay. what can so we do? What could we do to get it better? <laughs> That's the question. I don't know. And I think it's got to do like if I'm my personal thesis on it is it's just got to do with ego, man. I honestly see these. And I, like, I'm not from here, so I'll talk a little shit. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go <laughs> but, ahead. Um, go ahead yeah, yeah. It's just like you'll see different um, areas or different clubs or different schools not really fuck with other with other areas. I agree, man. So it's just like if you're from North Van, I'm not going to go down to I'm playing Surrey. Why would I play in Surrey? Hell no. I'm just going to play these guys over here in North yeah. Van. Or if I'm from Burnaby, I'm not going to play these guys over on the west side or whatever it may be. And that just to me is like from coming from the island, I would go up to Campbell River or wherever to Victoria or, or Nanaimo or wherever the players were. It didn't matter if it was a two-hour, three-hour drive. It was just like – there's the people around me aren't doing it for me at my level so i need to go and it wasn't about it wasn't about i feel like players today have this like feeling of like oh if i go over there i don't know if the, the i don't know yeah i don't, I I don't know, know i right? don't know yeah so and I it's have just to like i know and <clears throat> i feel you man so to bring so to bring the conversation yeah. back because that was a tangent and a half um <laughs> you have adapted to that like crazy so how how did you develop that okay i'm not getting love here in vancouver sure. now i'm going to halifax or oh they're showing me love over in, over in china let me just go over there yeah. that most people don't do that most people don't have that little tick with the like hey i don't care like let's go anywhere yeah. let's go jump into the abyss and see if it works out how'd you get like that because i love the game <laughs> i think that's for the reason i love the game and if you if people want me to be certain places and accept me I'm gonna go there and give yeah. it 110. percent Hell yeah! And I think that's what it what it is, right? Um, so yeah, I think that's what it is, and I just like doing new stuff. I don't like staying on the same old, same old stuff. I like trying new stuff. I like going different places, right? So okay, I think okay, that's the reason one of the reasons why. So then, how do you convey that feeling of just loving the game and just kind of being fearless and just going for new opportunities? How do you convey that to say? Uh, I mean, because you're coaching all the time, how do you convey that to you know a tenth grader? That's like, ah, you know, I'm the best over here at Edmonds, but I don't really want to venture all the way over there to Mount Pleasant or Creekside and go play the guys over there. How do you yeah. convey and coach saw, that? Um, I think, you know, by telling kids, just just giving, telling them my experience right. and where I've been and how I developed as a player. But also, how could I say it? Also, uh, I just had it in my head, man. <laughs> I just lost it. Happens all the time, man. We, we're, we're getting up there in yeah, age. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that's how you're going to get grow as a player yeah just tell them that that's how you're going to grow but you stay in one area the whole all your life glass ceiling glass ceiling you, you, you're not you're not going to learn mm -hmm. you're not going to learn from the culture or somebody's experience right and you're not going to add it to your game mm -hmm. so I think what me going to China going to Halifax going to these different places Indonesia Japan Super I brought crazy. all that into my into my basketball game but also my 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 knowledge as well, and knowledge as well, and that's why I think that that's what why I'm here. Yeah, man, you're and so going cultured. Different places, man. You're so cultured. Like it's like you don't play like a. Uh, I mean, to say this in a derogatory way, but you don't play like a, a Vancouver guy. No, no, like you don't play like you're from Vancouver. At no, all. not at all. And people hit me up on the DM me, hey man, can you train me? Like I just talked to my wife, train me. I'm like, dude, you're from the you're from the states, man. So, I'm like, boo, why is these why these people keep on hitting me up saying, you know, come yeah. train me and they're from the States? Like, because you don't you don't play you like don't you're play from like here. her. I was like, oh, maybe I, I, I guess yeah. you're right. Yeah. I guess you're right. What uh, what area do you think you really play like? I got an idea in my head, but where do you think like you really play like you're from? I like New York, I think. Yeah. Man. That's all I was gonna say, East Coast style. East Coast. Man. East Coast grungy. <coughs> East Go East at Coast, man. Yeah. Quick little fast twitch movements yeah, and stuff man. like that. East Coast, man. Mm -hmm. East Coast. Yeah, definitely East Coast. Because you don't have like a see the West Coast is more like that kind of like kind of smooth swag. Yeah, yeah. Kind of like a little bit more melodic and yeah. stuff like that. Versus like the East Coast is just kind of like I'm gonna rip your rip, damn head yeah, off. Yeah, I'm gonna you rip know? it off, man. Right? <laughs> yeah, Rucker yeah. Park style, right? Yeah, there's too much that skits in my loop. Yeah, man, yeah right <laughs> for sure. Yeah, Rucker Park is different, man. Yeah, Rucker Park. Oh man, I just remember back in the day, or not even back in the day, like 20, 20 
2013 or 2014 watching uh, Kevin Durant just rip it out up there for like uh, oh yeah he went for like I don't know 60, 60, 60 or something points? like that yeah, Rucker, yeah. that was crazy yeah, yeah. and just like seeing him getting rushed like that yeah, and stuff man. like that we yeah. don't see that here I don't know I've never seen I've never actually witnessed a situation like that it, like in a street ball sense like I see it when like you know someone wins a provincial tournament they <coughs> they rush the court and stuff yeah, like that I never seen I've never game, seen man. it out here so it's just like speaks to the culture a little bit you know what though let me tell you something i think you know i, I it's funny because i played uh yeah was it last week i played with the police officers oh, the yeah. transit police they had they go around and play against night hoops teams and stuff like that so like they needed an extra place so i played so i played at trout lake community center sweet and there's a the big filipino uh community there that yeah. play there yeah dude they're going crazy man yeah like i felt like i was in asia man sweet they're going through with every oh my god oh, crazy they're going nuts so they have that culture here yeah but okay. it just needs to somehow it's just in pockets man but bro you see, know what i mean that, that's you're gonna say that because you're you because you're bro. you okay it's true that is you're true, you bro. okay that this is, is not gonna happen in other places yeah, right this is, is one place that's gonna happen is where the fuck you're playing so yeah, like true. relax that people aren't gonna drop people like you know saying like that come on true. i just hope i just wish that you know we had more like guys like like back in the day i had my crew yeah but, but, but some of those guys they're not playing as much because a, you know not just age but also they don't they have jobs right jobs and doing <sighs> other things so right so it's harder now it's hard to say listen man like if i want to start something like who do i a street ball thing like who do i get yeah who do yeah. i get yeah. it's like man just think of myself yeah yeah, right? there's only so it's like hard, one, man. Guys. Yeah. So that's why I think too. I go to China and Asia and all the other places because there's more guys like me out there. Yeah, bro. you know, I feel you. So what made you like? What made you? There's so many times when you just could have like pivoted slightly and gone a different route oh, away yeah. from basketball. Like oh, just easy, you know, man. there's so many little ways you can branch off and and and, and choose a different path, but yeah. you just continue to continue, continue, continue to just pound the rock essentially, yeah, man, and just yeah. like continue to not give up no, and, and have that perseverance, man. What when you're in that place, when yeah. you're in that place where you're like, I don't know if this is the move. I got kids, I got a yeah, wife. Man. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so. What 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 pulls you out of that? What's the thought pattern there that gets you out of that? I made it this far, man. Mm. And I don't want no regrets when I'm 80, 70. Oh, man, I should have continued. Should have played. Should have played. I should have done that. Should have went to China. Should've... Yeah, yeah. Damn. I think that's what it is. I look I look in the future. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I'm sorry if I can't see myself in the future. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not like that, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what I'm talking about, though, right? I yeah. see myself, you know, sitting down, you know, at an older age, yeah. you know, Saying that I just don't want any regrets, and I'm me, me saying that to my, I'm saying that to myself. You know, I should have done that, man. I mean, I should have stick in the game a little longer. I should have done that. No, man. Damn. I'm trying to go. I'm trying to go. Keep going, man. So what's so? Yeah, that's easy for you to say now because you're at a point like. Yeah, I am fucking blowing smoke again, it's but like okay, you're man. you're at a point yeah. that like you're internationally recognized as you know Canada's best street baller yeah. and one of the best street ballers in the world. Period. You know, yeah. up there with you know Professor and Bone Collector and yeah. Hot Sauce and all these guys, right? Yeah. You're at that that pinnacle level. So when you say and you're in a spot where you can just go and tour in China or tour in the Philippines or, or yeah. have these business opportunities, essentially. Yeah. So then, what's next? Like wh where where can you go from here? Like you've you know you did your thing professionally. You yeah. chose a street ball route, and now you're touring everywhere. Like wh so how do you go? How so do you go? After that? Where do you go from there? What's the next step? When you're like, because as basketball players, as athletes, we're always like, okay, I'm here now. I want to <coughs> go here. I'm here now. I want to go here. And you've played that way. But I mean, bro, you've you know played with the best. You played with NBA guys. You, yeah. You know, you've done all this stuff. Your resume is huge. How do you take a next step? Where do you go, man? I think mean, next up now, I got my merchandise, man. So it's a business thing. That. Yeah. So it's I'm, a business I'm, thing. Yeah, I'm really, and it's a, it's a new beast. It's not easy, man. All right. I mean, it's, it's fly. Too, oh, it's, oh man, the stuff is sick. It's yeah. sick, man. They, you know, they did a good job. So I collaborated with uh, uh, Handle Soul. His name is Han Chow. He's like one of the top street balls, probably the top influencer right now in China. And he has his own. Um, he started with his own clothing line called Handle Soul. Okay. And he went from Handle Soul to District Six. And then, so I met up with him two years ago in China. So he's been watching me play since the Nautic days and loves the Nautic and stuff Hell like yeah. that. So we met up and he's like, though, listen, why don't you start your own clothing line? Uh, we're here to help you out. Also, we do um, 
ten thousand dollars clothing line too as well. Oh no way. Yeah, That's yeah. Devin man. Williams, yeah, he helps him out. Yeah. So the, the Damn, the show, your shit is actually has a similar feel. Yes, man. Yes. Oh shit. So he they do their his his stuff. Yeah, some of his Dude, stuff. I love both that stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's cool stuff, man. So that's how I got got into it, man. He's the one that told me, hey, listen, you should start your own clothing line, man. Damn. So I watch him a lot, what he does, and uh, he's a good businessman. Yo, he's great, man. Like, mm. So I watch him, and I learned a lot of stuff. And it's just a new beast now because now it's about business now. Now the merchandise, marketing, how to sell it. Um, it's 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 a different beast, man. I did too many sales, man. I did two sales that I shouldn't have done, you know. And I told him, "Listen, man, you can't be doing all these sales, <laughs> yeah, man." You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. But um, <laughs> but it's a learning experience. He said, "Listen, man, I went through the same stuff too, man. My first year, so mm-hmm. but it's doing well. The clothing line is doing really well, yeah, man. I'm getting about uh, so the first so it launched in November, and it's done well, man. I made over a thousand bucks in, in November, man, and Sweet. it's getting bigger and bigger. Uh, Slaves kind of slowed down at Christmas time, you know. Oh, the there bike. you go, right there. Exactly, right Super there. Superfly. Yeah, man. So that's the Grassy Grizzly colorway because of Vancouver Grizzlies. Yeah, colorway. Um, Who designed all the stuff? Uh, 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 District Six. District Six. And handles okay. uh, Han Chow. He he's uh, actually you know what? It's actually a guy named uh, what's his name? Sniper. Sweet. Sniper is a designer. But Han Chow is more like the image guy. Yeah. So listen, this is what I have. And he's like, okay, I got you. I, I, I know what you're cool. talking about. Yeah, so Sniper. Sniper also, also does uh, Devin Williams stuff. And I got the winter line coming out. I got a new headband coming out pretty soon. Oh, yeah. Uh, so they, you guys could you know the people that view this. You could check Absolutely. it out on my uh, yes. Instagram. We'll, we'll, we'll link to that in the, in the show notes for sure. Yeah, man. Super crazy. So now it's, it's less about, are you going to just continue to tour? You gotta continue to tour. Oh, I'm definitely gonna continue to tour. Like you got a couple years left, right? I got more than a couple Come years, on man. Now. I got you more. You can go for a while. I can't, and I think that the reason why, because you know what, even a you know the new Bandits team, the new the CBL team. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The Coach hit me up and actually wants me to play. Oh, right? you're gonna go back to that route? I don't think I I don't I told him listen man this is what it is man like I'm going I got a lot of tours I got a lot of stuff happening it has to be worthwhile to yeah me, right so. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Because you know I'm still competitive too. I, li- I, I I'm I'm competitive as hell. I like I like playing pro ball. Yeah, right? for sure, for sure. And, uh, so you never know. You never know. But I think I'm gonna lean to more of this route because this is I could last longer. Yeah, you're game, yeah right. No, it make it makes sense. And it, but I don't know. I've seen you go, man. Yeah. I've seen you go, man. Especially like when you're playing, you know, in the uh, NBL and the playoffs and stuff. Oh, I yeah, see this is different. Or even when you played, um, because a lot of people don't know, man. You represented Canada, the William Jones Cup. William like, Jones Cup, so, man. Like that's a different. I've seen you play a lot of times, and yeah, there's man. a different fire in your eyes yes. when you're playing on that stage yeah, and man. you're playing those arenas. Yeah, man. It's a different beast, a different and it's so beast, crazy man. to see your like game change and morph and you're looking at pick and roll angles and stuff dude and man you're a and i player. sucked at the I, man when i went to denmark i sucked at the pick and, actually that was okay but when i went to denmark it actually made me like an expert in pick yeah, and roll yeah because that's all they really did was denmark pick and roll bam 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 then you got to kick it out if you don't yeah. got it you kick it out to the swing corners more. or yeah. swing one more to the yeah. guy coming on top yeah, yeah so i learned a lot man bro first thing that I, and you know first thing that. bro first thing i heard <laughs> I would just, I would always pick and roll, and I was like, pick and roll is a two man game. First thing they said, yeah. pick and roll is a five man game. It is because you gotta, you gotta, oh, you know, when you come off that screen, you gotta look, okay, here, uh, the roller. How's the help side D coming? Help side, oh man, yeah. everything. Swing one more. Oh man. There's the gap right there. He's gonna shoot that. Can 45. I go in a little more deep? deep? Yeah. Oh. Do I need to hold on to my handle here? Do I need to loop around? Do I because if I loop around, then then the help side's gonna come on that side and hit the corner right oh, there, big time. and then reposition right there. That's all out of pick and roll. Pick and roll is a five man game. And I was like, what? Because I was like, he, the first thing he said, how many options are there out of a pick and roll? I'm yeah. like, well, I mean, there's really just three. You know what I'm saying? He's like, no, no, no. There's unli- five, it's unlimited, man, bro. It's unlimited. honestly, un- honestly unlimited. Like, oh, yeah. you want to like, do you keep your dribble? Like, well, it's like it's so crazy. It's crazy, dude. Anyways, um, <laughs> you know, super crazy, super crazy. Do you saying you didn't know? how to do the pick and roll game yeah or we're mediocre at it in denmark yeah. is like hard to believe but i mean yeah, sure man, yeah man, i mean I, I saw you run that to perfection in in you know both the nbl yeah, and yeah. uh and just recently yeah, I was, with the I was Jones. Good, but but when i went to denmark though man i think i you know because because i gotta hit those shooters too right those oh 100 and on man. time on target on time target yeah mm-hmm. exactly and uh yeah i mean just having that strength and, and playing at that level i mean but you do the the level you played at at the William Jones Cup in... That was high level, man. Where was that? K- Korea? No, where was that? What what country was that? That in? was Taiwan. Taiwan. Yeah, yeah. Taiwan. That was a high level, man. 
We played nine games in nine days. That's crazy. And high high intensity. Yeah. Not no break. No, no, no. And we're playing against national. Internet. Yeah, international team. Yeah. International team. Yeah. Philippines, man. Yeah. I think it's the Philippines. They're a top Asia Cup. Like they, they're. Oh they, yeah. They're up there. They can play. Yeah. Iran was tough too. All these Middle Eastern what, countries. Yeah, 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 yeah. Semifinals or whatever was that. Uh, I didn't go to semifinal. No? It goes. It goes by wins. Oh, okay. Go. So if you get if you get most wins, you win the whole thing. Who'd you guys play in the final again? Final was Korea B team. <laughs> and they were tough what because they had the guy what's his i can't remember ray chan <laughs> me and him were going at it dude yeah like yeah it was a good game man Damn. it was it was and yeah that's on youtube too as well yeah entertaining yeah, man i was doing all those games man that's good yeah, uh, uh kyle julius uh, coach you guys out there man that guy yeah. man great coach man yeah great coach he man. goes way he, back he, he, yeah he's good yeah good stuff <laughs> super <laughs> good fire, stuff. man super good stuff yeah, yeah he's man. uh yeah, he's something else. Um, anyway, so you're going to go a different direction now, a little bit more with the business side of things. Yeah. Um, I definitely admire. I think that your span as an athlete is, you know, your prime as an athlete is maybe, I don't know, four, five, six, yeah. seven, eight, I don't know, not that long. Yeah. You know, it's it's at max probably six, seven years or something like that when you're really in your prime, yeah. right? Your prime as a businessman. <laughs> You could be seventy, yeah, and killing it, yeah, right. And so it's it's dope to see you take that approach and yeah. and leverage that attention that you've gathered in this fan base that you've gathered over the years. How did you get so big in in China, man? Like, how did that? Like, what? That's out of nowhere. You're I think a kid I was from Vancouver, bro. Yeah, I think I was kind of big already in China, but not crazy big. Like people, some people knew about me. But why China at all places? So this is what happened. So there was a girl named girl that went to McGee Secondary School. She hit me up. Yeah, I mean, hey, can you train me? Yeah, crazy. She went to my <laughs> old high school. I'm like, oh, cool. So, like, what you what high school do you go? I'll go to McGee. I'm like, oh, crazy. Da, da, da. Do you know so and so? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, whatever. So, we hooked up and uh, I trained her. And I was like, no, let me just ask you a question. Like, What's the opportunity for me to go do some coach in China? Yeah. She's like, oh, you want to go? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, sure. She's like, okay, I, we can make it happen. So, that's how it happened. Damn. And then, so when I got there, this is in Chongqing, China. When I got there, I coached a girls team, her high school girls team. It was packed. It was like 60, 50, 60 kids, man. What? Ball handling. Oh, dude, it was crazy packed. Then after that, I went to go coach a, another high school up on the mountain. They're like sponsored by Nike or something, man. They had like a Nike, like out. It was like an outdoor court, but indoor. You, you understand yeah, what I'm talking yeah, about, right? Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But it was a sick court, though. Yeah. So I trained. It was like over, like there was like sixty guys in there. So man. when you say outdoor court but indoor, for those that don't know, it's like, yeah. it's, it, like it, was it roof? Did it have a roof? Yeah, the roof. But yeah, it was, it was like all an open, indoor though, right? Yeah, it was open. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was so there's open. no walls, insulation, or that. It's yeah, just yeah. Like, it's it's covered. From they only the had rain. a wall on one side. Yeah, they have a wall. But it was open. Yeah. But like, yeah, this yeah. side it was open. Yeah, I got yeah, you. Yeah. So and and that happened. So I coached them. But really, when I played in the, it was like a street ball game. Mm. in Chongqing and it was hot I remember man it was hot as hell man I killed that game man and I played one on one and one of the moves went viral okay. in China and it went on one of these sites called Hoopoo Hoopoo is one of the biggest probably the biggest sports um, websites in the world you know, okay. China got billions of people yeah. right yeah. so it went on that <laughs> and that's how I became famous off through that clip damn and there's a clip that's a viral right now on on Instagram where I went, I don't know, I did a sham gun and I dropped a guy. Yeah. That clip, and that's the second time for me going to China again Bro. in Chongqing. And that clip became viral. Okay. So that's how it became Damn. popular. And then Han Chao, that's how I met Han Chao after that. Got you. I started touring with him and going different places. <sighs> Dude, so I can't even keep track. I literally see these clips like nonstop from you. Like it's you got a lot of bags, a lot of tricks in your bag. I do, man. You got quite a, lot a, bit. Of, a lot of tricks in your bag. So it was uh it was pretty crazy to see all that stuff uh evolve in China and grow and for you to just grow into this like iconic street baller, but then yet from Vancouver, from the city that I don't want to say like doesn't really show you love, but like not the way that these other places around the world no, are showing man, you love. No, like not no. even even close. Like it was so crazy to me because I'm seeing this reaction from uh, in, in other places. Yeah, and then I'll go to like, oh man, what's that? Um, uh, round ball gym in Surrey. A uh, burn. Yeah, uh, uh, Saint Bernadette. Yeah, burn. Yeah, burn. Saint secondary. Bernadette. Saint, yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Whatever. I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> Burn Creek, yeah. Oh, Burn Creek. Burn Creek. Burn Creek. Yeah, Burn Creek. Burn Creek. I'll go there and I'll be like, there's like, there's like 
10 people in the stands. And then you and then I'll go and see you other places. I'm like, wow, there's literally 2,000 people here yeah, rushing the court. Oh, and then we're over here in Vancouver. People don't even know. People and I know. get that like some people, you know, see you dap you up. You're very well known. And, yeah, and, and, and yeah. Love. But they're not going to come really go watch something. Right. But, yeah, you know, and that's time. not to say like, dude, you definitely like every time that anyone sees you out that actually knows you, yeah. it's like it's all love. And there's a lot of people that do know you. Yeah. But I'm like, there's not like a fanship is what I'm trying to say. I understand what you're you know trying what I'm to saying? say. No, it's true. It's there's so not true, like a, a huge following. And it just makes me like shake my head in yeah. a way. And so I, I just, there's a lot of things I don't understand. And yeah. I don't understand why they're that way. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, to see, I mean, just the other day, you went up against, uh, what was it, Demi and put, put on a, I saw the highlights and oh, all that dude, stuff. Oh, dude, and we were going at, he had yeah. 41 that game. Yeah. I had 37. But it was a good game, man. It yeah. Was a good, it was a good, solid game. And, you know what, man, if pe- people miss, man, whoever wasn't there, man, it was a battle, man. It was a battle. But if you have that same same game in China, like oh, you got dude. people going crazy. Oh, people be going nuts, man. Right. Over the small through the leg spin move, whatever. Like they're going crazy no, no matter crazy. what, man. And it's packed. Yeah. It's packed. Like we did a we did a clinic, uh a clinic in China, a first street ball clinic we did, me and H C at his court. Dude, they announced it like three or four days. He just planned it like three to four days. It was over a hundred kids there, man. Hundred kids and adults and mixed with adults yeah. there in that clinic, man. Just off of off of that. Yeah. Three, yeah. four days. There. We're there. Boom, done. Damn. How did streetball get so big over there? Dude, I don't know, man. I really don't <laughs> I, I can't tell it because you know why? They got guys like him, yeah, more free, ISO, all these guys, got him helmet. They got so much events over there yeah. happening and they pour so much money into basketball. Yeah, man. Got um, Yao Ming. Yeah. Yeah, right? CBA and all CBA, that. CBA, he made it, it just, and he just made the game even bigger, right? So you got all these guys. And I think, you know what, to go back to what you said, what we talked about, what could we do to make the game better? I'll tell you what, one of the reasons why Vancouver's slipping a bit with other cities is because we don't produce pro basketball players professional mm. yeah yeah we produce like you know guys like there's, a, mm-hmm. there's only a handful of guys that really play pro in vancouver if you really think about it there's not that many maybe maybe 10 i can probably think of like really if you think really think about it who really six, played pro seven? not that many not that many yeah. if you think about it, if you look at toronto comparatively it's not even it's not even close not See, not that's even the close. problem yeah. and we don't come back the guys that go play somewhere from here need to come back yeah. and hold a camp and yeah. the clinic to show these kids, hey, listen, if you want to be, if you want to play professional, NBA, yeah, N- overseas. NBA, overseas, whatever, yeah. this is what we have to do. Hmm. Guys, this is the they, route. This is the route. Hmm. You, we, I think we need to come together mm-hmm. and say, we got to hold a big clinic. Listen, we got to teach these guys. But you, like you said. Yeah, this camp over here, this camp over here, this camp over here, this club over there, this school over there. I'm not going there. Not messing with each other. It's like the drug game. <laughs> Crazy. It's so similar. Gang Crazy. game. Yeah. I'm not going this block. I'm not going on that block. Yeah. Toronto's a different ball game. Totally you got different. Andrew Wiggins coming back. Yeah. Who else? Who are the Canadian guys? Corey Joe. Corey Joe. Yeah. Those guys are coming back and playing ball yeah. in the Crown League. Fuck, yeah. They they start their own clinics. Even guys that aren't even big names, like uh even guys like well, Nick Stauskas is kind of a big name, but like there's guys that do come back that are like, oh, I just went over played. I yeah. play with a bunch of those guys in Red Bull. Or you know, yeah. exactly. And I know DC yeah. Smith, that big yeah, guy. Yeah, 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 shit. yeah him, yeah. man. I know him, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he hosts he goes back and yeah. plays, man. Yeah. And he asked me, Yo, Joey, can you come play in the crown, man? Man, I'm like, man, I got no time, man. I wanna come, <laughs> right? I wanna come. Yeah, but you yeah, know what yeah, I mean yeah, but yeah. like yeah man like we don't have enough of that man yeah and I think that's the problem that's I, I think that's really big that's beautiful man and, and I do listen I do see I see you actually you know stepping out and, and trying to change that. Like, I see your clinics I see your three on threes oh, I see like this, it's not you're not for guys that don't know like this isn't someone just like oh this is the problem this is the problem this is the problem and not doing anything yeah, about it yeah they're like I, the, the, you are holding shit and taking steps towards bringing these people together yes. long way to go but long still way, you know it's still an effort in the right direction um i gotta bring it back here i gotta bring it back because we just we, we, we we're gone i knew this would happen i yeah, knew this would no, happen I, <laughs> I got a couple of things i need to ask you about yeah i need to ask you about um 
one of the biggest things that, you know, most of our listeners are like, you know, 25 to 35 or something like that. And a lot of them are just finishing college if they're, if they're athletes or, yeah. um, you know, whatever, whatever it is. And a lot of what a lot of these people are thinking about now is longevity. And if there's someone I know that's had a lot of longevity is yourself, yeah. right? Uh, taking care of your body, taking care of your health, mentally, emotionally, physically, all that stuff. Uh, listen, what? When did you start to adopt this mindset? Because I know you do a lot of work with Myo Detox. Yeah. I know you, you really take care of yourself in terms of nutrition. Yeah. I know there's a lot of things you've probably picked up over the years. But when yeah. did this kind of like, I mean, you're moving now just as well as you moved like eight years ago. Yeah. You know? No, it's true. It's so true. So how, how did that happen? How did you get How did that I change that mindset? Yeah. I got hurt. When I was in Denmark, I got hurt. On a way. Uh, yeah, I got hurt in my, so you know that break, the Christmas, there's a Christmas break. You know, you go yeah. home for two weeks, I came back. I got hurt in one of the games, and I came land. I came down. I did a spin move, and I came down, and I just hurt my knee. Mm. So I was out for, actually no, I was yeah. So during that time when I hurt my knee, we didn't have a game. We just had practice. So I sat out. It's like man, I really need to change how I. After that, I was like, I really need to change how. How old I, were you then? I was twenty nine, thirty, because I didn't stretch much. Damn. So all that time, I never stretched. <laughs> yeah. Stretched, and I never really took care of my body. I didn't eat well, yeah. stuff like that. So after that, man, I was like, no, I, I got to really change how I, because I want to play this game for for forever. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be forty out there. You want to be fifty out there. <laughs> exactly right. Sure, I want to yeah. play this game for a long hell time. Yeah, hell yeah. So that and then that, that's what happened, man. That's what I. Uh, it's like, listen, I got to stretch more. I got to eat a little bit better. I got to work out more. I, I, I never hit the weights, man. No, I, no. I just relied on not much, man. I wasn't consistent. You know, I just relied on my talent. I just played ball. I was yeah. in the gym working hard, and I think. That's I I like doing this, bro. The, the yeah. weights I hate weights, man. <laughs> I hate it. I hate it still today. I hate it, man. I don't. And plus, I don't lift a lot of weights now. I do a lot of mod detox stuff for sure. Yeah, yeah. Movement I, flexibility. I'm tight. I'm a tight guy because yeah. I'm the fast because I'm really quick and fast. That's how you so move. My yeah. muscles get tight really yeah. quick, yeah. so I got to maintain, do all that stuff, and it really helped me out a lot. Hell yeah, yeah. helped me out a lot. Yeah, man. shout out to everybody out there for sure. I still get aches and pains. Don't get me wrong. I ain't yeah. Superman. Yeah, you know what I mean, but. You know, I know how to take care of things, man. Totally. I know how to take care of things. I know because you've been through injuries, you go and see mild detox, seeing other physios and stuff like that. Um, you learn, you pick up on a lot of stuff. Definitely do. Yeah, yeah you got to yeah. pay attention to all of it for yeah. sure. It's, yeah. it's uh, so key. Yeah, you have like a, you're, you're very fast twitch. You're very, very fast twitch, man. right? Your game is very fast very twitch. Very fast twitch. So, uh, I mean, uh, I, I've obviously gone and, and, and t had those conversations or whatever and just, like, expanding your muscle range and, you know, oh, well, God, what does he always say? Uh, yeah, he ch it's like a car. Like a car. Oh, yeah, yeah. So he said, yeah, yeah. Like, said, like, like a Honda. Did yeah, you say like Honda? He's a, he's a Hyundai. Hyundai, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's, like, he, he's like, yo, you can either be a Hyundai that's got, like, a you know, really souped-up engine, but it's still a Hyundai, right? Now, do you want to be a Ferrari? Because if you want to, you know, expand your muscle range yes. and be a Ferrari, then you got to change a couple of things or whatever, yes, right? Yeah. Load patterns and launch patterns and yes, stuff like that. Yeah, load and launch, yes. Yeah, it's super but it's, crazy. It's, but it's crazy though it makes you think like dang like i'm in these positions and i could do that but it's like it's hard at the same time bro could you dunk back in the day yeah man i could have dunked man bro. i just didn't never did it often man i saw you throw down one like i don't know when i saw you throw down like not too long ago and i was like shit joey can still get yeah, up there yeah man i just don't i just don't do it man i because I, I, the knees man the knees i want you know i want to play this game for a long time i don't want to be just dunking like crazy man. damn yeah. super crazy yeah super yeah, crazy. yeah. yeah. Super but not crazy. nothing no windmills or nothing like that just basic yeah dunks, no i man. see you i see you i see you out there for sure for yeah, sure. yeah. <laughs> so so you're 34 years old now you've been going at it for so long Again, on the longevity tip, how do you continue to just get up? Like as an athlete, it's tough. Get up, continue to get to the gym, continue to get to the gym, continue to get to the gym. Yeah, years after years after years after years after years. Some guys are like, oh, it's my third year in college, and it's just tough for me to get to the gym. And I'm thinking about you, man. I'm like, God damn, this guy's been playing pro for 10 years or whatever it may be, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and this guy is still getting to the gym, getting yeah. to the gym, getting to the gym. How do you still get to the damn gym? Mindset, man. I feel like I could accomplish more. There's still left, there's some stuff left in the tank. There's actually a lot, not some. There's a lot of things I still have to do. I think for my basketball journey. Damn. And I wanna not just, you know, I wanna improve as a player, mentally, physically, whatever, but also impact. Yeah. Impact a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I wanna grow this game as much as I can. Right, I already friggin', I already have all these followers on Instagram. I can't stop, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, can't. Yeah, yeah. If I stop, it's, it's a waste of time. I started my clothing line, stop that. It's a waste of time. Yeah. Why did I even start? Yeah. I already have all this stuff that can be potentially good money wise mm -hmm. in the future, in the next two years or three years, whatever. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it could be an opportunity that could go, so I can go 
really big at something, something go viral. Like mm-hmm. I don't know. I can't stop. <sighs> but dude, see that's one thing. That's on a that's on the career, on the legacy, on the business side. But like I literally still see you in the gym, like doing fucking crossovers. I still do it, man. I it's just a love of the game, man. Like, like you're I like said, literally in there like just drilling simple you simple know between stuff, man. behind like very simple stuff and i'm like i just feel like it always get better that's the thing i feel yeah. like it always get better man Damn. i could i don't care if i'm 34 35 40 41 42 i could always be a better player yeah. i could always be better hell yeah right hell yeah just like anything man you could always be better man at anything man like you yeah. i don't know if you're not good reader or whatever whatever yeah. you could always be better man keep reading keep reading yeah. you could always learn something you could always learn something. Like I'm here, I'm I'm learning something about you, about myself, about your business, about mm-hmm. that can always help me, but mm-hmm. also help each. You see what I'm saying? We're, no, I, I we're get both what you're helping saying. each other, right? Yeah, you're curious. You're always curious. Yeah, always, I'm always curious. Okay, man, yeah. that's pretty cool. Like, <clears throat> like I didn't even know this. You're doing this stuff. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. So I saw it on Instagram. Self hires. I'm like, hey, hold up. I had to pull up. I'm like, is that what's the name from the gym? I play ball. I'm like, yeah. man, that's crazy, crazy, dude. Yeah. Like. For you to go from, like, I knew you from the gym to this, this is huge. Huge step, man. It's crazy. And it's, and it's great because you're putting Vancouver on the map and you're starting your business. And, and it's now it's a clothing line. And I think you got great stuff. Hell, yeah. You just don't know where this is going. This is, you just got to keep going with this, man. I tell you what, man. It's, it's, uh, it's a long journey. A lot of guys have come in and laid the, uh, laid the bricks down before me, man. There's been a, a team working at this for a long time and really trying to put you know, Vancouver on the map. But it's just kind of come to a pinnacle now. And you know, it just you know, timelines <coughs> kind of collapsed in the right way. And you know, skill sets were complementary. And now it's grown to a spot where we can do things like this and do different you know, work as a digital agency and a creative hub and do the, uh, do the lifestyle and the and, and, yeah. uh, the handcrafted uh, apparel and whatnot which is awesome but it's just like the whole goal was as you just said was put vancouver on the map we just kind of sat down and thought man there's no place where collectively vancouver icons and staples in the city and upcoming acts and things in, in various spots whether that's like man we've had listen we've had you know um uh rappers we've had ufc artists we've yeah. had entrepreneurs mr martini we've had guys that are like absolute staple to uh, flip out we've had different djs uh tons of guys that are, i mean we've had 25 episodes so far i'm missing tons of guys there but it's just like these are staples in the city that need to be put on somewhere and there's nowhere in vancouver that's gonna You're put right, them on nowhere, there's nowhere else where else I never yeah. seen Martini. I saw Martini on the on the podcast. I never seen a Martini on any other like yeah. platform. Anything, right? On so I was surprised even to see Martini. Crazy, like, right? Well, Martini's Crazy, talking right? about his business about and his, his history, and history and shit. I'm like God, that I'm like so Mar- Martini. You just brought Martini. He, he, like you, he came out of shell. Like I don't 100%. know. Like I've known Martini for a long 100%. time, but like man, that's so good that Martini's here. Yeah, because people to see where what he took, where he took Man City. Yeah, from dip to this. It's huge, crazy. but nobody really, really heard his story. No one really knew. But you helped him do that. Well, you see, and that's great, man. You might get a, you might get a one minute segment here on this news thing. You might get a, a quick little you know ninety second here, but you're never gonna get a spot where you can go, hey Joey, let's go let's go talk about the last fifteen years. Yeah, over an hour and a half. Yeah, yeah. You know, so people can really get the full context rather than just you know trying to bundle everything up in a fucking second. No, you're so right. Like you just said, a lot of people don't know. There's there's history here, basketball wise. Oh, there is there's huge. history here. Culture wise, if you were like, "Yo, there was crazy street ball events in, in Vancouver in the early 2000s," they'd be like, "What? What? Really? Yeah, no that's way. true." But only the only the guys that really really, really were into exactly. street ball would know. But everybody else was exactly know that, right. So there's yeah, untold true. stories here, man, and there's unsung heroes like yourself that are like have really become icons in other places in the world, yeah. and they're not even fucking icons here. It's true, though. So we got to change that. No, it's true. It's right. true. It's and true. I, and that's why I mean, thank you for coming on and, oh, and, and, sure, and hollering man. at us real quick. Oh, dude, I I wish. I can come a little earlier, but oh I man, some time. It's all good. Yeah, no, yeah, it's all good. Great. Listen, man, it, it doesn't have to stop here. I mean, listen, th- there's a couple. I mean, you're definitely one of them. There's a couple other guys that I'm just like, okay, let's. Okay, so this guy was on episode 20, whatever. Let's make sure we get him on episode 40. And yeah. Let's get him on episode 60. Yeah, because we just covered five of my little bullet points here, oh, and really? I got 15 oh, oh, more really? to go. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, you know, we the, you know we got we got to wrap here oh, and, for sure, and all man. that. But listen, man, there's so much that you have to give in terms of knowledge, in terms of experience, and and in terms of personality. Like, you know, if you don't know, like Joe 
always a great fucking guy and a genuine human. So, you know, reach that. out and, and, and be coachable and things yeah. like that, right? Like, yeah. there's so much to be absorbed here. And so it's like, it's almost like we're just trying to harvage, uh, harvest a little bit of knowledge and resources yeah. from uh, these people that we actually have right here. Yeah. But we don't actually know we actually have them right no, here. No, it's true. It's true. You know what I mean, so, it's true. It's true. Yeah. Anyways, brother, listen, I really appreciate it. We're going to wrap, but uh, listen, listen, I'm dead serious, man. I want to actually get you on. I want to talk about yeah. uh, nutrition. I actually want to talk oh, about man, your actual about skill work. Yeah. You know, like there's so, I want to talk about how you've actually transitioned yourself uh, on the court from being a pro player to being a street baller and yeah. going back and forth. And there's yeah. so many different things we could take and we could go for hours, man. Yeah. But, you know, it's a great little teaser right here. Yeah, I say yeah. teasers about like an hour and a half, <laughs> two hours <laughs> two right hours, now man. for real. But, um, I know, so we can get you right here uh, at King Handles. Yes. Uh, oh, my God, 124. Dude. My guy. going up, man. Damn. So every, other, so every uh, day and a half, for maybe two to three days, I get 1,000 a, a followers. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. So okay. I'm learning how to what content what to put up, what not to put up. Um, just learning the game a little bit, man. Definitely. You know, this is a learn. This is all a learning curve, man. All this stuff, man, is like okay, what what works, what doesn't work, what are people are gonna you know yeah um, go on and chat. You know what I mean? Super so, cool. That's you busting guys around ball. Oh yeah, this round ball. As My per team, King, team King handles, man. Killing as as you guys just took home the trophy. Yeah. For sure. For sure. The headband. I like it. Yeah, that's a new headband coming out, man. It'll be coming out. Mid March, pre order is going to start March 1st. Hell yeah. Yeah. So people can get at you on Instagram. Instagram. Uh, I'm yeah. sure you're on YouTube. YouTube, yeah, YouTube channel and what else? Uh, Twitter too, but I'm, on, I'm not on Twitter too, too much. Gotcha. But more Instagram and uh, YouTube. Hell yeah. We can get the merch. Uh, we can just link through there. Or how yeah. do we get the merch? Um, just go, yeah, just go uh, King Handles merch right there. King Handles merch right there. And then you go to kinghandles.com if you want to purchase your merch and, uh, the King Handles merchandise. Bam, bam. Yeah, man. Hell yeah, brother. I yeah, really man. appreciate the time, man. And also, too. I'm coming out once a week. I'll be doing um, this starting this Sunday at 2:30 p.m. I'm starting a, a Twitch account. I already opened it oh, up. Oh shit! So, ball handling workouts for an hour and a bit. Hell yeah! Just showing people how to you know handle the rock. Wow! And it's free. Come on once a week. You know, show show people how to ball. Shout out to yeah. you getting on the on the new waves yeah, of tech, new Twitch, attack man. and all this and stuff. And that's on tap too for basketball. Crazy. There's nobody really doing that, so I'm gonna try to kill that game on the Twitch. Exploring and, and killing the, the digital side. Yeah, man. My guy, man. Yeah, man. Hey man, I'm happy to see you prosper. I can't wait to see what you do in the next ten years. I think the next ten years is gonna be better than the last ten years, I man. Think so man. If you if you gotta stay healthy, man. Yeah, <laughs> man, for sure. Yeah, yeah, but it. you just making this pivot to the business side, yeah, you know? It's yeah. it's it's gonna be crazy. And I can't wait to see it and uh and just to you know help and help share your share your story yeah, and share your experiences and uh you got a lot to give, man. And oh, uh thanks, I'm man. I'm I'm happy that you're uh ready and available to to give it and pass it on because that's oh, huge, time. man. Big time. Anyways, man, I appreciate thanks you. Thanks for the opportunity, but for real, man. This is great, man. All right, guys. Yeah. Thanks, y'all. That's a wrap. All right.